Hank. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome uh, to Fairview Baptist Church this morning. We know the Lord will bless as we worship Him together. And if you would, then we'll begin by singing our worship hymn. Rodney, if you would, please. in our opening prayer, please. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for a beautiful day that you have blessed us with. We thank you, Father, so much for being in your house this morning, giving us that ability. We pray, Father, that what we do here today would bring honor and praises to your precious name. Father, I thank you for everyone in this body that has made this day possible. The things that they do, especially the ones that cleans and the little, the, especially the ladies that comes in and sanitizes after our services. We're so thankful for them and them making it possible that we can come and fellowship together and worship you. Father, we thank you for our pastor and his family as they serve with us here that does everything in their power and their possibilities that makes it possible that we can be together and holds our church together. We're so thankful for that. Father, as we think about our goodness here in our body, I think about the ones that's all over our world that's, that's uh, protesting and doing violent things. I pray for them, Father, that somewhere or somehow they're hearts could be touched and their minds would be changed. And Father, as I think about that, all the lost, Father, as they hear your word today, I pray that it would touch their hearts in a way that would cause them to, to come to you and look to you as their personal Savior. Father, thank you for salvation. Thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for the blessings of this day and the health and strength that you've given us that we're able to be out and able to be here. Father, again, thank you for everything that you've given us. Thank you for being with us this day. And, Father, as we hear your word this day, help us to apply that to our lives and live by every word that you send to us. Go with us now. Lead, guide, and direct in everything that we do. We ask these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. If you I started to say you'd be seated, but you already are seated. <laughs> anyway, um, had a wonderful time uh, yesterday. Emma and Lance, I uh, want to thank you all for your prayers and your love and your support, the, the gifts and cards as we had the uh, drive-by uh, uh, baby shower. Uh, the, the rain held off, and it was really a good time and, and things that way. So they want to thank you uh, very, very much. Continue to pray. Uh, the baby is October, right? Just right there in October. All right, so just continue to pray for them, but they want to thank you. Um, I want to remind you, of course, that uh, Joyce Faye's uh, service, the Celebration of Life service, is September the 12th on that Saturday. Uh, visitation is uh, from 2 to 3. 
Uh, the service then will begin at 3 uh, right here, and I'll be emailing you out uh, some uh, real soon here about information we have. Well, we will be, try again, we will be having a meal uh, following the service over in the fellowship hall, and uh, I'll get you information on that uh, in the very near future. Uh, continue to pray for who's your one. Again, this is the excellent time just to be praying and asking God to give you that situation, the opportunity, and the words uh, to be able to share the love of Jesus Christ with that one person that is on your heart. If we all would be able to do that, think of how many people that the seeds that would be planted and the Holy Spirit will bring the harvest. But you continue to pray as God leads you. All right, let's go ahead and then continue with our next hymn. We're going to sing number 54, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
If you would then, we're going to take these next few moments uh, in silent prayer, uh, thanking God for all the blessings uh, that he has given us. So please pray as Lisa plays for us. that you have bestowed upon us in your great and mighty mercy. Father, we thank you of knowing that every good gift comes from you and that you supply all that we need, dear God. May your hand continue to hold and bless us as we serve you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Now enjoy our special music. Oh, 
Amen. If you're ready to get to heaven and sing and shout the victory, let's hear a shout. Let's hear a shout. All right, John, boy, I'll count you to turn the volume up or things or whatever. Let the record state that there was a shout, even though it probably didn't get picked up by the, uh, by the, my, the microphones. And, I, and we heard everybody at home as well it coming right through. I appreciate that very much. If you would, this morning, uh, let's turn to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, and we are going to look at, look at how to get the attention of Jesus. Matthew chapter 9, and we're going to begin in verse 18. And if you would please stand with me as we read from God's word. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 18. He says, And while he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And then verse 19 says, And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And then if you'll jump down to verse 23. And then when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but she sleeps. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in. And he took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this glorious morning that you have given us and all the blessings that you have bestowed on us. For we do know that everything that we have, every breath that we take comes from you and from your loving, loving heart. And Father, we glorify and we praise your name today. Uh, for knowing that you are here and you are with us and that you care for us in everything that we do and all that happens. And for that, we give you praise. Father, I pray you take our lives today as living sacrifices. I pray if there is one here that does not know you, that they will surrender their lives to you today and receive the forgiveness of sin and the, and the hope of eternal life. But Lord, take us and use us for thy glory as we offer ourselves up to you this day as living sacrifices in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Now you probably well remember, there won't be a quiz, but about two Sundays ago, we were looking at about how God hears our prayers and that we discovered how prayer can and does change things and we discovered that that happens when we have that fervent and righteous prayer unto God not just you say in the words but it comes from that from that heart well today we're going to discover how then to get the attention of Jesus what causes him to sit up and take notice. All right, I want you to think about that for a moment. And then what happens when Jesus was preaching to the 5,000? Remember that? He was there and there was at least 5,000 people there, men and women and children. And they were getting hungry. And what happened? One small boy had a lunch of fish and bread. And Jesus took that lunch and prayed and multiplied it and he fed all of them and there were even left food left over. Now, how was it that just one person out of that whole 5,000 was the one who stepped up to Jesus? Or what about the woman? Now, we sort of we skipped over it there, if you notice there, as we, as we read through our scripture today with the woman with the issue of blood. I want you to hold your finger there in Matthew and turn over to Mark. Mark tells us just a little bit more about what was going on there. Mark chapter 5 and verse 31. And this is what I want you to see. Mark chapter 5, 31, it says, And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who 
touched me. See, right before that, I got ahead of myself in verse 30. It says, you know, the woman with the issue of blood, she came up and she touched Jesus and she was immediately healed of that plague. Verse 29 at the end of it says, and then verse 30, Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And then this is where I said, he says, and the disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, who touched me? Think about that. This multitude that is, I said, there are so many people that they are thronging around him. They're pushing and shoving and things and moving along. But Jesus knew that one person had touched him. All of those people, and yet that lady stood out. So much so that the disciples were even you know, confounded. Like, how, you know, how did this happen? So that's what I want to look at today. I want us to consider today. What is it that gets the attention of Jesus? And just like we did with prayer, we're going to continue. We're going to take that, if you will, one step farther. You know, because we want to know. You know, that's good for for what I've just read to you. But we want to know, how does that apply to me? How can then I get that same attention from Jesus? All right, now let's go back to our scripture. If you kept your finger there, Matthew chapter 9 and verse 18. Now, I want you to look at that verse 18, and I want you to answer this question. Why did Jesus follow this ruler? What was it that got the attention of Jesus? Why did Jesus listen to him? And just like The other week when we were looking at prayer, I sort of asked you that question, you know, what was it that changed God's mind? What was it that got God's attention? And what was the answer? The answer was prayer. It wasn't anything complicated. It wasn't anything that that was mysterious. It wasn't anything that way. It was very, very plain, wasn't it? And so look at verse 18. Because this is not that same, this is not a rhetorical question. This is not a trick question. When God wants something to happen, when he has a responsibility with us, when he wants us to do something, it is not mysterious. It is not complicated. It is not hard. It doesn't take education. It doesn't make any difference about how much money you have or how pretty you are or anything like that. When God asks us to do something, it's very, very simple. So now I'm going to ask you to say it out loud. Like I said, this is not a rhetorical question. I've built it up. I've showed you where the answer is. I'm sure you've read the scripture. And even if you haven't, I think you probably could almost figure out and guess what it is. So what is the first thing that the ruler did? The first thing that the ruler did was he worshipped. Now, I heard you at home. I heard you all yelling at your TV screens and your computers and things. See, look at that. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler. And what is the first thing that he did? He worshipped him. See, that's not complicated. That's not hard. That's not something you can, you can say, well, you know, I'm not a preacher, I'm not a deacon, I'm not a Sunday school teacher or whatever we want, want to say in that way. I'm not old. I haven't been to church for 50 years. I've only been coming for a little bit or things. There is nothing that can stop you from doing exactly what this ruler did. Think about that. Think about that. The first thing that he did was that he worshipped Jesus. That's what he did. He worshipped him. 
The ruler knew who Jesus was. He knew that he was not just a mere man. He knew that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. And he knew that only Jesus could help him. And with all of that, he knew that the first thing that he needed to do was to worship him. See, it's not complicated. It's not hard. Think about that. If you want to get the attention of Jesus, you have to know him. You have to call upon his name as the Son of God. And you must worship him. How beautiful is that? That's where it started. He didn't come in with demands. He didn't come in and holler and scream or yell. He came in and he fell at his feet. And he worshipped him. Now what else did he do? Look what, the, look what he said next. He says, while he spake these things, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him. And listen to what he said. My daughter is even now dead. Boy, I have got a problem. <laughs> My daughter is sick unto death, and even now she may already be dead. But come lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. Do you hear that confidence? Do you hear that faith? Again, it's sort of like the other week when we were talking about prayer. He isn't just saying, come on, Jesus, you know, come on over here. We'll see what happens. He's saying, listen, Jesus, I know who you are. I know that you're the son of God. I know that you have the power. Oh, there it is. There's the answer to the question. What was the second thing that he had to do? He knew that Jesus could accomplish what Jesus wanted to do. And even if my daughter was dead, if you, not anybody else, not the world, not money, not strength, not fame, not power, not even that fancy preacher down there at Fairview Baptist Church. Only Jesus could lay his hand upon her. And even if she was dead, she would live. Can you hear that in his voice? Can you imagine being there? I mean, I get, I get goosebumps even saying it in my feeble attempt. But can you hear the passion? Can you hear the confidence? He had no doubts. He knew that Jesus was the answer. He knew it. He knew that he had the power. And so he said, come and lay your hand on her and she shall live. He knew that Jesus could accomplish what he wanted to do. How's that for you? Do you really believe that Jesus has a power to help you with everything that's going on in our lives? And our lives are complicated right now. Of course, they've always been complicated and things in that way. But do you see what was in the heart of this ruler? That he trusted Jesus, that he believed in Jesus, that he had the faith that only Jesus had the power and the ability to help him. How would that change your prayer life? How would that change your daily life? How would that change how you went about what was going on in your life and the problems that were in front of you? If we truly believe that we could say with this rich young ruler those exact same words and mean it, with the exact same passion. What would happen if you would wake up each and every day 
with that prayer on your heart. Jesus, come and lay your hand upon me and I know that I shall live. Think about that and how that would change your life and your outlook about what was going on. Because see, here's the third thing that, that happens in this. You know, there's just a couple verses here. You probably looked at that and said, the preacher can't get a sermon out of there. There's only like three verses. But, of course, you know me. We'll get that anyway. But look. Look what happened. Verse 18. While he spake these things, the ruler came. He worshipped him. He said, my daughter is now even dead. But come and lay her hand upon her and she shall live. He knew that he had the power. And what was the result of all that? That's what I'm talking about. When you, when you live your day, when you're facing the things that are before you and everything that is going on in this world, look what he does next. And Jesus, verse 19, and Jesus arose and followed him. He approached Jesus. He worshiped Jesus. He said, Jesus, you have the power. I lay my problem at your feet. And what did he do? The man, the ruler, turned and walked away. Walked to his house. And what did Jesus do? Jesus was right behind him. It doesn't say that Jesus then took off and the guy you know, got in right in behind him. What I want you to see is what the man did, because that's who you and I are. The man laid his problems at the feet of Jesus. He says, I've done everything that I can. I've given my problem to Jesus. I know he has the power. I know he has the love. I've accomplished what I'm supposed to do. I'm going back home to my daughter. Because it's finished. It's taken care of. It's in Jesus' hands. And what did Jesus do? He went after the man. And went back to the house. What would happen if we faced our days with that exact same confidence and faith? That whatever was happening in our lives, that we would lay it at the feet of Jesus. And say, Lord, you got this. <laughs> I know I don't. <laughs> I know I can't imagine I don't even know what's going to happen in the next second. But Jesus, I give it to you. And whatever you desire, what is ever your will, you can accomplish it. And I trust you completely. And he turned and walked away. The Bible doesn't say, the scripture doesn't say, but I don't know if he knew Jesus was behind him at the time. You know, I want to think that he just turned and walked away and said, that's it. You know, whether, you know, like with his century, you know, whether he comes or he doesn't, you know, he's going to take care of it. I don't know he had any idea that Jesus was going to follow him. I'm reading as we go through that. That's the confidence that he had. Think about that. He was willing to accept whatever came. And he turned and walked away. And what happened when Jesus saw that confidence? We've already talked about it. The scripture says Jesus arose and followed him. He rewarded his faith by following him. The ruler came to find Jesus. And what happened? He found him. The ruler came to lay his problem at the feet of Jesus. And what happened? He laid his problem at the feet of Jesus. The ruler came to ask Jesus to take care of his problem. And what happened? Jesus took care of his problem. But I want you to see something else in this. This is sermon number two. And it will be really quick as well. Because it's right there at the end of verse 19. And Jesus arose and followed him. And then what does it say? And so did his disciples. Now, that might be just to throw away words or things and in there, but I want you to see what kind of power that has. When that man approached Jesus and he worshipped him and he laid his problem at the feet of Jesus and he had the confidence that Jesus was going to take care of him and the problem, what happened? The disciples saw it. 
it affected those that are around them. And as Christians, I want you to understand that if we face our problems with faith, if we face our problems with, the, with trusting Jesus, if we face our problems knowing that he has the answers, the rest of the world is going to see that. It wasn't just Jesus that followed him. His disciples said, hey, I went in on this too. I want to see what's going on. This is going to be good. Think about that with the people around us in the world that is going on. What we say and how we act when it comes to our faith can influence everybody around us. And we know what's going to happen. We know what the end of this is going to be. They didn't, but they wanted to find out. Do you hear the power in that? And how that can influence those that are around us? If we will trust Jesus, if we will ask him to come into our lives, if we will just give him, what is on our hearts and facing us. And you know what the really, really, can I say cool? I guess cool is okay, not groovy or things or anything that way. <laughs> that way. Jesus followed him home. Jesus didn't just say, oh man, you got problems. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty big. You know, I don't know what you're going to do, you know, but thanks for letting me know. Every time I say, you know, I say stuff like that, I get afraid, you know, because you know. No, what did Jesus say and do? He said, yes, I'll follow you home. I'll take care of your daughter. I'm concerned about the concerns on your heart. We know that because when it comes there in verse 25, 23, he says, When Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making noise, he said to them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. They laughed him to scorn. There's sermon number three, but I'm going to skip over that one and come back for sermon number three. And when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand and the maid arose. See, we know that Jesus was concerned because he came to the man's house. He told everybody that was in the way, get out of here, I've got work to do. And he went in and he took the girl by the hand and she arose. Jesus cares. Think about that. He cares for you. He cares what's going on in your life. He cares about the problems that you have. And he wants to help you. But what do we have to do? I told you there was going to be a quiz, didn't I? <laughs> Let's go right back to the very beginning. What did I tell you? It's not hard. It's not complicated. Everybody can do it. Our responsibility is to worship him. Our responsibility is, is to recognize him as Lord and Savior. Our responsibility is, is to ask him to come into our lives. Our responsibility is, is to say, Lord, here I am. Forgive me of my sins and take my life. Our responsibility is, is to recognize him for who he is. And for what he has done for us upon that cross and shedding his precious blood for the forgiveness of our sins, that's where it starts. That's what gets the attention of Jesus. That's why the little boy came forward with his lunch because he knew Jesus was going to take care of the problem. That's why the woman with the issue of blood reached out and touched him because she knew that he was going to take care of her problem. That's why the rich young ruler, the rich, the, the ruler came because he knew he was going to take care of his problem. That's where it starts. Do you today, are you coming to seek Jesus? Do you want him in your life? Do you want him to take care of your problems? Do you want to trust him with everything that is going on? The ruler did. And not only did Jesus hear, he followed him home and took care of his daughter.
If you want that for your life today, you must ask him to come in. I'm going to ask Lisa to play, and as she plays, I want to ask you to be serious with Jesus today. Are you ready to worship him? Do you have the faith in his power to take care of your problems? Can you say, dear God, come and lay your hand upon my life, and I know that I will live? Are you ready to place everything in his hands? These altars are open here this morning. If you want to come and pour your heart out to Jesus, you come and you do that. If you want to pray with me, just come and pray or, and stay. And after the service is over, we will pray together. You there at home, wherever you are. If you want to just kneel down right where you are, ask Jesus to come into your heart. Ask him to take care of your problems. Ask him to lay his hand upon you. He will. But we need to ask him first. Come and worship him. Ask him to come into your life. And Jesus promises that he will. You come this morning. Whatever concerns on your heart, whatever need you have, you give it to Jesus and let him lay his hand upon you. You come as Lisa plays. Dear God, I thank you for your hand upon our lives. I thank you of knowing that we can have the confidence that if you will lay your hand upon us, that we shall live. Father, we offer up ourselves to you this day as living sacrifices. I ask you to, to be with us as we lift up our eyes and see the fields that are white with harvest and ask you to help us to be obedient. Father, I pray if there is one that has come to accept you as Lord and Savior this day, that they will reach out and they will, they will just reach out to you and know that you are in their lives. Father, bless our path, bless our words, bless our deeds, and may all we do be to give you praise and honor and glory in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.